guys, it's me, Danielle Danny Buttons, and I'm here today with my finished pages for the month of June. June has been a crazy coloring month for me. I think I've colored 21 finished pages out of like over 10 books. I didn't get all of my goals done, but I came pretty close. Um, I can actually discuss my goals for the month. Maybe I shall do that. My goals for the month were finish five Sam colors, six different books, five Disney color by numbers, one Disney not color by number, and one new book. As you can see, I finished everything but my Disney not color by number. So pretty good. I'm going to be writing my goals for next month. So if you have any ideas for goals, let me know down below. But let's just get right into it. These are in no particular order today. I think my favorites are at the bottom. So... First, this is Eerie's Trace Around the World, I think volume two, I'm not positive. I decided to try something different in here and actually trace like I guess you're supposed to. I used my Statler Tri Plus Fine Liners and I just traced all their lines in the different colors. I think it came out really cool. Um, I made a mistake right in the very beginning and I smudged the red. I'm not even sure if you can see it on camera, which is nice. But other than that, I just took it nice and slow and I traced everything. And I think it came out pretty cool and I might do that more in this book. The only problem is trying to find pictures that have a lot of color variety so that it makes sense. But I'm going to try. should be fun. This is all like the planets next door. So I can do those in all fun colors. So you might see more out of this soon. <clears throat> next is the three... Split colorings I do with my husband. So I'm gonna just show you the pages we finished this month. We finished, these are in no order of how I did them, but this mermaid, he is using like a 50 pack of Crayola markers, but my old pack and half his colors are dead, as you can see with his blue, very dead. He ended up throwing it out and he also um, has limited color choices in general so that's why you see a lot of repeating colors on his side and I we did this bunny girl I really decided to like this method of outlining in a very very light color to almost make it look like a shadow but just to emphasize it a tiny bit instead of leaving the background completely plain so I did that in a bunch of these pictures that you're about to see and this was the first one we did and I've just been calling her bonnet girl but I I love all of these colors together like the pastels I really love them and I wish I could replicate that in Prismacolors or other color pencils and I would be doing colored pencils more but yes that's volume two chibi girls by April Amber this is chibi girls coloring book volume one by April Amber and it seems as if we finished one in here yes you can see again that I did that same method but with the light blue it is very light so I, I I think I can see it in the camera but it is intentionally very light just to give it the tiniest shadow and he I love it he goes very creative he drew on his own flowers to match those flowers and a nice purple fish. And then we have Chibi Girls Coloring Book Volume 3. So let's see what we have in here. This farmer gal. I like this a lot. It's funny how like I did darker, he did lighter, but then he did darker and I did lighter. Our um, fence is very similar. And again, his sky, he threw it out after that other picture, but he still was trying to use it at this point. So. And then Tooth Fairy. This one I told him what I was doing, so he tried to do it too. But I just, I think it's so cute. And I've been using a different background color each time. So again, I like these books a lot because I like doing all different skin tones and all different hair colors. And it's easier for me to do that when there's like some fantastical creatures because I don't know anyone in real life with mint green skin. So I feel like I'm rushing and I don't need to rush this much. Whew, take a deep breath. 
Okay, I got one page done in this big boy, Color Quest Animals. These are so hard to show you because they're so, so big. But I did the Aardvark. I really enjoy this style of picture, which is the mosaic style. So none of the little squares touch and you outline each individual one. So I did that guy. And then this book is actually very new this month. And I did two in here. This is Color Quest Cityscapes. So I did the Eiffel Tower, which I can't even get all in frame. So there that is. And this one is more of the squares, but this one's a little bit sparse because there's a lot of white in it, obviously. And then I did the cover page I think is the Chrysler building in New York. Again, you can't really see the whole thing at once, and I apologize for that. So this book is unique in that it has some weird shaped pieces, which this isn't the best example of it, but there's like some triangles in the middle and some curved pieces instead of just being the grid, like in the background. So that's pretty interesting. And to be honest, this one might be my least favorite of the three because of that. And I haven't really even done a page that emphasizes that yet, so I might have to do that for next month so I can show you what I'm talking about easier. Like, here's a really good example that I don't know if you can see because it's so light, but it's, it almost looks like a comb because you're supposed to not color in the windows, but they're just kind of weird shapes and I'm not sure how I feel about them. Okay, I finished two and a half so far. I'm actually filming this right after my last video that you probably saw, and it is like 11.30 on the 28th. So I'm definitely gonna finish this extra page, and I might finish one or two more that I'll just show you next month. But I've been doing this book in order, which is 100 Beautiful Mandalas by Camelia Angelkova. So I did this page, which is grays and yellows, and that silver that I hope you can see shining. Ooh. And then I did this page, which is kind of what I call like my reject colors. So I just pick out colors I haven't used very much and make a color palette from that. And as you saw in that last video, I am in the middle of coloring this page. So after I'm done with this video, I'll continue this. But this is also, I used the my gel pens that have the most ink left and then I just made a color palette from that so that is those then we have a whole bunch of color by number so I did one in color by number animal stencils by Sun Life Drawing I wanted to try on the black background to do a page with my alcohol markers and eh, it looks nice of course but I don't know if it looks that much better than my regular water-based markers that it's worth doing because I have my water-based markers already labeled to match the colors. So I'm glad I tried it, but I think I'm gonna stick with my old methods. And obviously it worked really well on the black backed paper because you can't see where I missed, but I think if I was trying to do it on a regular page, you would be able to see it and that would be much more difficult than I need it to be. Okay, this is a bunch of new books in a row, right? Yes, like five new books in a row. So this is from my French haul and I decided to try to just do this in order. So I did page number one in here. I'm pretty sure I just used my Crayola Super Tips. These, this is very weird paper. I don't really know what kind of paper it is. And it's a little bit hard to color. You can see a little bit of streaking, but I think I did pretty well on parts like this at the bottom. I just streak evenly. So I very pointedly go one line at a time. So if you see streaks, it will be even streaks. For the top, my best tip to avoid major streaking would be to do each segment and end on the lines to hopefully minimize the amount of um, like overage you see ink build up so it's okay I don't I don't think I picked the best here I don't know if you can tell but down there they look like they match and then on them they're both a little bit too dark so 
it's okay. First page of that guy. I also did one page in World of Mice, stained glass color by number by Sun Life Drawing. I'm just gonna do this in order. These mice are so cute. So I just did this guy. I love it. There's so many different situations they get themselves into that I'm very looking forward to coloring. I don't love necessarily what my colors for the mice themselves look like because again, I have these pre-labeled from using them in my color by numbers and, and other books it doesn't really matter as much, but in this book it does. So we'll see what we do there. It's still definitely super cute and I can't wait to do more. Then I did one in Square Mandalas by Bell the Family. I just got this book. I decided to randomly flip open to the middle and then I might end up going um, the other way from the beginning after this. But for the first one I randomly flipped open. <laughs> I kinda don't like the one I did first, so that's frustrating. But I don't know if you can even see. There's a few different colors going on and I feel like it's hard to tell. So I have been doing the X method and I've definitely been enjoying that. When I first opened these books, I was like, whoa, those are some tiny boxes. But I think, I mean, it wasn't too tiny to work with. I was just very surprised. So I don't love this page in particular, but I loved the process of doing this page. And I'm looking forward to doing more in this book in July. But again, I think it's just the colors were weird. Like this is supposed to be red brown. A lot of it was very similar colors. And when you're doing the X method, that makes it a lot harder to see. So I think it was peach, orange, scarlet, red, brown, red. And that's a lot of the same thing. So, but page one done. Then I have my two French grid books. Uh, this is, I don't know what that says. I'm not even gonna try, but this is the Sum Sum version and I did two pages in here and I'm also doing the X method in here. What I need to note about this volume in particular is the grids don't line up. So every other line is a tiny bit askew from each other which I think is to make it seem even more detailed but again with the X method it's a little bit different. I think it looks fine but I can't necessarily X in the same way I do in the other ones. Let me zoom in and show you. So as you can see, none of them look like they're touching because of that, because everything's just a little bit over to the side. So if that bothers you, I wouldn't pick this book as your first to get or just color it regularly instead of X method. But my theme for June was the Renaissance of Disney. So basically all those amazing 90s movies and Little Mermaid. So I did Belle. And I also did Jasmine, and I really like how this came out. So with the X method, you just have to watch because it's harder to tell the colors apart because you see less of it, but I definitely can tell that she's there. And again, the process is so fun that it almost doesn't matter what it comes out like as long as I try my best. So I also have Disney Babies, which I did three in here apparently. So let's see what we did. Going along with the same theme, I did Simba. I did Baby Mulan and Mushu. And I did Baby Pocahontas and Miko. So these were a lot of fun. And this book, they all, the grid lines up, which I personally like better because sometimes I go this way and sometimes I go this way. And it's easy to do that when it lines up perfectly. So these grids are bigger than Belba. So I think Belba is like three millimeter by three. This is probably like a four by four. It's not that much bigger, but it's definitely bigger. My final two books. Okay, I did a page in Fairy Tale Princesses and Storybook Darlings. I actually did a buddy color with Jamie from Jamie's Coloring Love, and we picked this one. So, Little Miss Muffet. Purple and yellow are my favorite colors, so I decided to try that. 
I actually did like mixed media on this one, which is weird for me. So I did her skin and hair in Prismacolors. And I was going to do the whole thing in Prismacolors, but then Jamie finished first and she had done Cali Arts. And I was like, wow, I can do Cali Arts too. I like never remember that I can do Cali Arts in these books because I always try so, so hard in Howlin' books. So I did Cali Arts for a whole bunch of it. And then I did glitter gel pen on the flowers and a little bit everywhere else. So I love looking at the Cali Arts from the back. That's like my favorite to see the reverse image. It looks super cool. So that was fun. I enjoyed that, Jamie. We should do more. Or if anyone else wants to buddy color, you've seen my collection now, so let me know. Just like I did a buddy color in this one. This is Grayscale 2-in-1 Chibi Girls by Jade Summer. And I did a buddy color with Crafting with Christy is her channel. So she or together we picked this one and I really like it. And I like it too because I probably wouldn't have done this one soon, but obviously it came out really cute. So I'm glad I did it. So thank you for doing this with me. And if you wanna do another one, I'm ready. So you can see I use glitter all over the place. I glittered the star, I glittered whatever the heck these are. We were thinking maybe like unpopped firecrackers. I glittered her hat. I glittered all these dangly things, and then I also used my Cali Art markers. If you're sensing a theme, you are right, because that is what I did on this page. This is all Cali Art markers and glitter. For her, I glittered her outfit. Ooh, that's a really good glitter shot. Ooh. Her outfit, this stripe on the umbrella. A bunch of her hair is actually glittered just to get extra shiny. I glittered the water and like the splash off the boat and I put some glitter on the clouds and on the ball. So I really love how this one came out. And that is it. That is all my pages for this month. Whew, that was a lot. So hopefully the momentum keeps up into July. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be filming in July now that my collection video's over. So if you have any videos you wanna see from me, let me know down below. Maybe I'll get to do some. I'm hoping to do some Christmas in July pages, fingers crossed, and for Disney, my plan is to pick characters that are from water-themed movies or that are water-themed themselves. So any fish, any Moana, any <sighs> Little Mermaid, Finding Nemo. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch now that I'm trying to name them quick, but you get the idea. So if you need to pick your Disney characters, that's how I'm gonna do it. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, stick around. So many new subscribers in June. So grateful that you're here and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.